ahead and worship the Lord, the great and mighty God, incomparable God. Go ahead and worship him. Just go ahead and worship the God that cannot be compared to anything before whom the mountains do skip like rams, even the small hills. Go ahead and worship him. He's mighty. He's excellent in power. He's glorious in praises. He's beautiful for situation. He's the Lord our God. Go ahead and exalt him. Father, I just want to say thank you. I worship you, Lord. I worship you, Lord. I worship you, Lord. I worship you, Lord. Blessed be your name, immortal God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Libra Calibo Romo Sacapoli Bashende Rebost, Lingro Lica Prolibo Sotusteli, Lingro Lica Shende Rebo, Malingro Lica Popra Lida Rabasacali Bost. Thank you, everlasting Father. Blessed be your name, Lord. In Jesus' name we have worship. I just want to say. Baba o eshi I just want to say Baba o eshi I just want to say Baba Tell him, thank you, Lord. Thank you for life. Thank you for provisions. Thank you for safety. Thank you for protection. Thank you, Lord, for the joy of salvation that I have in you. Lord, I'm saying thank you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Father, we are grateful. We are grateful for life. We thank you for safety. We thank you for protection. We thank you for provisions. Thank you, Lord, that it's according to your faithfulness and mercies that we have preserved in the past week and you brought us here again today. Lord, we are grateful. We know that so many people were alive last Sunday but are not alive today. But it pleases you that you keep us so as to come and worship you. Father, please accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the privilege of being able to gather to hear your word. We ask, oh God, that as you speak to us today, let there be understanding. Father, let there be understanding in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Please have your seat. Thank you, choir. More grace in Jesus' name. Now, quickly, you know, last Sunday I told us that we were able to record the audio. How many of us got the message sent to us? Oh, okay, good. I could say witness. Two, three. So those of us that didn't get, if we are not on the church platform, WhatsApp platform, maybe that's why you didn't get it. But today you can maybe submit your name to the admin or come here to any of the ministers, just drop your name and your number or to the, any of the ushers, your WhatsApp number. Drop it with the ushers, then we'll collate it. And after the service, we, you can be sure you will get the copy of the message sent to your phone, MP3. But um, today we have gone a step higher. Praise the Lord. We now have, we now stream this service live on radio. 
Amen. So if you are on the church platform, I've forwarded a few things to you. RCCG House of Prayer and WhatsApp group now so that you can see the link. And I've also forwarded what you can do. If you click on the link and you don't already have the app, it will prompt you to download the app. Mix, uh, Mixer.com slash RCCG slash House of Prayers. MixLR.com, maybe. MixLR.com. That's the internet radio where we are. And it is live. People are hearing us now. So in case there is somebody in their house who didn't come to church and you, you've seen the WhatsApp, you can send to them, let them log on. They will be partaking in the service now. This is just step one. Brother Larry Waju, we are coming to you. <laughs> Amen. So we are coming to video gradually. As a matter of fact, we have a consultant in the service that is worshiping with us now who is already taking note on what we need and how we need to move forward. Hallelujah. He was sent from the Apapa family, Lagos province 20. So let's clap for them. All the way from City of David, promised land. Thank you very much, brother. You're welcome to our midst. So he's, he's somewhere in the, I wouldn't let you know where he is so that he, let him enjoy himself. But he's taking note also. And uh, so one step after the other, we are improving. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And for some of us that are not yet participating, we need you. God needs you to join hands with us. The work is much. The laborers are few. And I pray that God will find you faithful enough to be able to commit some things to your hand in Jesus' name. Last Sunday, we started the series. Can somebody remind us what's the topic? Okay. Holy Spirit in the life of a believer. Good. And our text was taken from 11 to 13. Good. Thank you very much, man. And then we also mentioned Romans chapter 8, verse 14, which says, which says what? Uh, uh, as many uh, <laughs> expo. <laughs> that guy has done expo for us. No problem. Praise God. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And today, our text is taken from what? Acts chapter 1, verse 4 to 8. And we're going to be looking at verse 8 especially. It says, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the utmost part of the earth. So we are continuing with that same topic, the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer. I want to start by asking a question. Who actually is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity. Is the third person in the Trinity. As a test, who are the other two? God the Father, God the Son. So then the third person is God the Holy Spirit. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. Genesis 1 26. God said, let us make man in our own image and after our likeness. He was not talking to the angels there. No. He was talking to God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. Matthew chapter 3 verse 16 and 17. Matthew 3 16 and Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Here you see the Trinity present. 
Jesus Christ, God the Son, he was present life. He just came out of the river. And then the Holy Spirit descended upon him like a dove. And then God the Father spoke from heaven, saying, this is my son. First John chapter 5, verse 7. First John 5, 7 says, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Holy Spirit is also referred to in the Bible as the Spirit of Truth. The Spirit of Truth in John chapter 14, verse 17. John 14, 17, the Bible says, Even the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. That is talking about the Holy Spirit. Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10, called the Holy Spirit the Spirit of grace and supplication. The Spirit of what? Grace and supplications. Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10. Now, but we're talking about Holy Spirit in the life of a believer. What exactly does he do for a believer? Why does a believer, a Christian, need the Holy Spirit? Why do I say, why do you need the Holy Spirit? Why do I need the Holy Spirit? We need the Holy Spirit because he's our teacher. Micah chapter 4 verse 2. Micah chapter 4 verse 2. And many nations shall come and say, Come, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, and to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. Holy Spirit is our teacher. In John chapter 14, verse 26, John 14, 26 says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Not only is he our teacher, from this scripture we see that he is the one that brings to our remembrance. I, I know somebody, when that person forgets a thing, what you hear from the mouth of that person is Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. And before you know it, that thing comes to the remembrance. From that scripture also, we see that the Holy Spirit is referred to as our comforter. John chapter 14, verse 16. John 14, 16, Jesus said, I will pray the Father, and he shall send you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Now, at this point, you may go somewhere and meet some people, and they will tell you that their leader is the one that is promised in this Bible. That when Jesus was going, he said he would send you another comforter, and that comforter is Muhammad. Somebody will tell you that. But ask them a question. Look at that scripture again very well. He said, I will send you, he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you. For how long? Is he, the other person, alive? Is he with us now? Hello? Is he alive? Is he with us? Uh -huh. So that is how to counter it with the help of the Holy Spirit. Because they can twist it to you. And some of us, we don't know the correct answer. We will be looking. So today, the Lord will help us in Jesus. So the Holy Spirit is our comforter. John chapter 15, verse 26. John 14, 15, verse 26. But when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. Again, that is another proof to those people who said their leader is the comforter. 
and they didn't believe that Jesus was born of the Virgin Mary. So you see that, and, and they will tell you that Jesus is not the Son of God. So if they don't testify of the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ, then that is not the spirit of truth. Hello? Okay. So the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer, apart from being our teacher, apart from being the one to remind us when we forget critical things, apart from being our comforter, he also is the one that will give us power. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Jesus said, you shall receive what? Power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Now, power to do what? Or maybe first and foremost, what is power? Power is ability to do work. So, power now, if we define it as ability to do work, when the Holy Spirit gives us power, we say power to do what? Power to, number one, overcome. Some of us, the battles of life that we face, and we are being pummeled, beaten down, defeated, maybe because you don't have the power of the Holy Spirit. According to 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, 1 John chapter 5, verse 4 says, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. First John chapter 4, verse 4. First John 4, 4 says, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. That is talking about God. That is talking about the power of the Holy Spirit resident inside of us. It's also power to prosper. Power to prosper. Holy Spirit gives us power to prosper. How am I sure of this? In 3 John verse 2, 3 John chapter 1 verse 2, the Bible says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. God's desire is that you will prosper. And I pray that you will prosper in Jesus' name. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18 says, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. It is the Holy Spirit, the, the Spirit of God inside of you gives you insight. Have you ever wondered why some people sell water and they build house? And some people, they are doing something else that looks so lucrative and yet they run a grand. This, the difference may be the Holy Spirit. Hello? He teaches you your hand to, to, to walk. He will tell you what to do, what step to take, the businesses to avoid, the risk that you should not take, he will tell you. Psalm 1 Verse 3, Psalm 1 verse 3 says, He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Bring forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. If you have the Holy Spirit in you, Holy Spirit empowers you to prosper in what you do. Guess what? Holy Spirit also gives us power to excel. Maybe you are a career person. You, or you do hand work. You are a craft, handcraft person. The Holy Spirit will empower you to excel in that work. He has done it before. In Exodus chapter 31, verses 2 to 6. Exodus 31, verses 2 to 6. There is a man called Bezaliel, the son of Uri the son of Hor, of the tribe of Judah. God said in verse 3, he said, And I have filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom and understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship. And look at what he, dis he began to do because the power of God filled him to devise cunning works. He, he was a goldsmith. 
He was a silversmith. He was a brasssmith. He was, uh, he, he was active in cutting stones and to set them. He was very good in carving timber. He was good in all manner of workmanship. The same thing with Aholiab. Bezaliel and Aholiab, they, God just empowered them by his spirit. And those guys could do a cut across every profession, give it to them, they will excel. Whatever is your own option, job too, the Holy Spirit is there to empower you to excel. I pray you will excel in Jesus' name. He also gives us power to pray according to the will of God. The Holy Spirit gives us power also to pray according to the will of God. In Luke chapter 18, verse 1, Luke chapter 18, verse 1, Jesus Christ was speaking. He said, men ought always to pray and not to faint. I don't know if it has happened to you. You actually want to pray. And there is a burden to pray. There are issues, burning issues, that you know is only prayer that can solve. But immediately you need them to pray. What happened? You doze off. Has this happened to anybody? You need the power of the Holy Spirit. You need the men ought always to pray and not to faint. Jesus Christ knew that people will faint in the place of prayer. And you are not the only one. He, when he was about to be crucified, you remember the story? He took Peter and Co, John and James. They went to the Garden of Gethsemane. Only one hour they slept off. Jesus came and said, what? You can't watch with me for only one hour? He said, okay, let's do it again. By the time he came, the second hour, this time around, they were snoring. He said, Wow. He said, okay, you just continue. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Have you been to that, have you ever been to that experience where your spirit is willing and your body is weak? That means you need the power of the Holy Spirit. You need the energizer from within. Hallelujah. In Romans chapter 8, verse 26. Maybe you are not even weak physically. But you got to the place of prayer, you don't know what to say. You don't even know how to pray it. You are confused. Look at what the Bible says. Romans 8, 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself make an intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. There are sometimes you want to pray, you don't even know which word to pray. Guess what? The sweetest word is to change the gear and start speaking in tongues. You speak in tongues and the devil is confused. The Bible says, if you speak in tongues, you edify yourself. You build up your faith. Is there a time, even in this Christian walk, you feel discouraged? Maybe you've come to a time, you even doubted. Is it worth it after all? Should I continue this journey? I hope this is not a gimmick, this is not a makeup, this is not... If you have the Holy Spirit inside of you, it will ginger you up. The situation in, in Nigeria and in the world at large today is so mesmerizing. It could be dejecting. And no wonder several people still commit suicide, including, unfortunately, even those who come to church. But you know what? When you have the Holy Spirit, who the Bible calls another comforter, it will help you to overcome whatever challenge you are facing. 
It will, it will give you the strength and it will comfort you. It will show you a way out. You know, before you take any drastic decision that you will regret later in life, I want you to know one thing. There is nothing that is hot that doesn't come cold. Though. The Yoruba people have a proverb. They say everything that goes up, does what? Comes down. That dust that is doing guru, 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 as if you, he cannot bury you. And nobody can bury you until you die. And you are not dying now. Yeah. Hallelujah. So relax. But you know what? To be able to relax and relax well, you need the power of the Holy Spirit. You need him by your side. Actually, when the Bible says, I will send you another comforter, which will be by, with you always, the original Greek translation says, he they use the word paraclete. Paraclete means stand by help. We all know generator. But you know in some houses, some generator are automatic. Automatic means immediately Nepal takes light. It comes on. That is how the Holy Spirit is to us. That immediately you get to that critical point in your life, he takes over. So if you don't have the Holy Spirit inside of you now, you are, honestly speaking, you are cheating yourself. Or you have the Holy Spirit and you just leave him his, in one corner. You only speak in tongue on Sunday when you come to church. You are, you are missing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh. The Holy Spirit also gives us power to witness. Going back to our, our text in Acts chapter 1 verse 8. It says, and you will be witnesses to me. Look, this thing was demonstrated live. The very first day the Holy Spirit was given in Acts of Apostles chapter 2. When he fell on the people, 120 of them in the upper room that day, in Acts chapter 2 verse 4, the Bible says they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. They were able to speak in tongues and they, as the Spirit gave them utterance. And in verse 41, so from there, people ask questions. Ah, are these guys drunk? It's just 9 a.m. What happened to them? Why are all of them doing shokolo, shokolo, bambala, bambala, all about? We don't understand what they are saying. Then Peter stood up and said, no, men and brethren, we are not drunk as you think. And he started from Joel chapter 2 and he began to explain the scriptures to them. And by the time he finished, this was the same Peter, you remember, when Jesus Christ was arrested, just a young lady met him. And what did he say? I don't know him. He was now able to boldly speak. And by the time he finished speaking, in verse 41, the Bible says, Then they that Galilee received his word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about how many souls? 3,000. Can you imagine? That means at least there are 3,120 people present. Because it's 120 of them that were baptized that day. So at the end of the day, 3,000 souls were added to the church. Now, another thing the Holy Spirit does for you is that he emboldens you. He gives you boldness. You can no longer be cowed. Some of us were very timid before we gave our lives to Christ. We could not talk. But when the Holy Spirit comes on you, you are not just only able to witness to on one on one, you are able to face the crowd and preach the gospel. That is one beautiful thing the Holy Spirit again will do in your life. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, and at the end of the day, they ask Peter a question. I'm rounding up now because I want to give us time so that we can pray. And if you are not yet baptized in the Holy Spirit, Today is your day. I said, today is your day. Amen. Acts chapter 2, verse 38 and 39. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. 
For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. One thing you should know is that this Holy Spirit that we are talking about is for you, is for me, is for our children, is for as many as the Lord our God will call. So you want to ask yourself, how can I receive the Holy Spirit? How? Pastor, you have been speaking of the beautiful things the Holy Spirit does in the life of a believer. I don't have him. How can I receive? Number one, one thing I want you to know is that it is God's willingness to give you. Because Jesus said, this Father will send him. He has been sent since the day of Pentecost. Hallelujah. And in Luke chapter 11, Luke chapter 11 from verse 9, the Bible says, And I say unto you, Ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. So, for you to get the Holy Spirit, all you need to do is to do what? Ask, seek, and knock. And you will receive him today in the name of Jesus. Why am I so sure? Verse 10. For everyone that asks it does what? Receive it. Everyone that asks it, everyone that have asked, they got it. What can make a man not to get is if there is sin in his life, if he's not yet born again. That's why Peter said, repent. You must first and foremost repent and be reconciled unto God. It is the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer, not just in anybody's life. The Holy Spirit cannot stay inside just anybody. He looks for a believer, somebody who is born again, to stay inside of him. So if you are here today, you are not yet born again. Your first step, before you can get the Holy Spirit, is to be born again. Is to give your life to Jesus Christ. It's because, and after you have done that, if you ask, you will receive. The only thing that can make you to ask and not to receive today is if you are not yet born again. Look, why am I so sure? Verse 11 says, If a son shall ask bread of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Any father in the house? Your son is hungry and he said, Daddy, I need bread. Will you give him a stone? No, definitely no. Or if he asks for a fish, instead of a fish, will you give him a snake? Definitely no. Or if he asks for egg, will you now give him a scorpion? No. Okay. Look at verse 13. Verse 13 now says, If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give what? Give what? The Holy Spirit unto them that ask. Is there anybody in the house today who is ready to ask? I don't know. I need an answer. Yes or no? If you are not ready to ask, we can share grace. God will bless his word in our lives. Amen. But thank God for those who have indicated. You are not yet baptized in the Holy Spirit. Like I said, the first step is that you must be born again. Maybe as we close our eyes, can we please bow our heads? You are in the house this morning. You desire this Holy Spirit, but before then you want to give your life to Christ. Just raise up your hand wherever you are. Close your eyes. Raise up your hand. I want to pray for you. You want the Holy Spirit to come to your life. Thank you. God bless you. you but you want to be born again first so that you don't miss out in this beautiful Holy Spirit that we are talking about. God bless you. God bless you. Please raise up your hand very well. Yes, I can see. Yes. Please take your Bible and your bag. Come to me in front. I want to pray with you. You are very special to God. You are very special. Come to the front here. I want to pray with you. You are giving your life to Jesus Christ. Please come to me. Come to the front. Ushers, please help her. Help that brother also. Help her. Help that man. Help that man. Jesus. Holy Spirit, take control. Ushers, please be up and doing. There's another man coming behind you. Yes, please. God bless you. 
I want you to talk to the Lord. Say, Father, please forgive me my sins. Forgive me my sins. Right. Let's stretch forth our hands to them and pray for them. Let's pray for them that the Spirit of God will help them, give them power to live a life that is holy, live a life that is that's an overcomer's life in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we are praying. Father, we want to thank you for this, your son and your daughter. Please, Lord, forgive them their sins. Write their names in the book of life. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we are praying. Cancel us, please. Please let her go with this, my sister. Let them, please follow that sister. But um, I think you should just give them, let them sit in front. Let them sit there. Let the two of them sit in front with you, Ma. Uh, Aaron Lowell, stand up there. Uh, let her sit near you. Okay. Please, sister, stand up. Wait for him. Let him sit next there. Now, because we want to move straight to the Holy Spirit baptism. If you are in the house this morning, you are not yet baptized in the Holy Spirit. And you want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Choir, I will need you by your stand. Please rise up on your feet. You want to be, receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Just stand on your feet. You want to receive baptism in the Holy Spirit. Rise on your feet. You are not yet baptized in the Holy Spirit. You want the power. This power that we have been talking about. You want to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. Rise on your feet and we want to pray. <laughs> 